and kingdoms will bow down. Every chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise. But who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting the battles. And every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains. And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before him. gates make way before the king of kings a god who comes to save is here to set the captives free but who can stop the lord almighty our god is a lion the lion of judah he's roaring with power and every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains. And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before him. That's right. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Do you believe that? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? No one. Who can stop the Lord? Sing it out.
Jesus. Our hope is in Jesus.
Come on, let's worship him a little bit more than that, can't we? Worthy are you, Jesus. Worthy are you, Lord. You're worthy of it all. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. You're worthy of everything, all the praise, glory, and honor. We realize, Lord, there's no good thing in our flesh and no good thing in us. God, I thank you that you just poured out your spirit on us and you help us. You gave your spirit to me, God, and direct us. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of everything. Thank you for your presence. every yoke. It doesn't just break the yoke. It destroys every yoke. So I pray for every single person that's here tonight, Lord, that you would minister to them. All the struggles, hardships, persecution, whatever it is that they're going through, that your anointing would destroy those things, Lord. They can walk in liberty and freedom, Lord, in Jesus' name. Pray that you continue to move tonight. Lord, help me with this word. We've been studying, Lord, we're going to talk about fleshly living. Tries to draw us away from spiritual living. So, God, I thank you that you've given us the grace, the power uh, inside of us, Lord, to overcome the enemy. We love you. We give you praise for everything that you've done and what you're going to continue to do tonight, Lord. Uh, destroy strongholds tonight. A 
there's strongholds in Christians' life, Lord, that, that allow, like we talked about the other week, squatters, that allow the demonic oppression to stay there. Lord, I pray that it would be destroyed tonight. I pray that sin would be revealed tonight. Maybe sin that's in people's life here tonight, sin that's in people's lives that's listening, and that sin will be destroyed tonight because you want us to walk in freedom. You don't want us to walk in bondage. We love you. We give you praise for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. God bless you, and you may be seated. If you got your Bibles, I want you to turn to Galatians chapter 5. Hallelujah. I've been waiting on this. Y'all ready? We've been talking about the war that we're in, the, 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 how the flesh fights the spirit and the spirit fly, fights the flesh. And in Galatians chapter 5, verse 7, 17, we're going we're gonna to break it down just a little bit more than what we have in the past. And it says this, For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And it says these are contrary to one another so that ye cannot do the things that you would. And, and we all realize that, that there's a war going on inside of us. I told you a couple weeks ago that even though we got saved, our flesh didn't get saved. Your flesh ain't saved. That's why Paul said we have to crucify our flesh every single day. Because every single day our flesh wants to do wrong. You remember I talked to you about how the desires of the flesh, just because we got saved, that means that the desires go away. The temptations don't go away. Are y'all listening to me? I don't care how long you've been saved, how spirit-filled you are. It doesn't matter. You're going to be tempted every single day to do something you ain't supposed to do or not to do something that you should be doing, okay? So there's a war going on. It's a spiritual battle, and, and the, the, the spirit man is, is crying. The Holy Spirit is crying out for us to chase after righteousness, but the flesh side of us is telling us to chase after the flesh, amen? Um, see, when, when we got saved... We had a lot of junk, or I did. I don't know about you. Some of y'all might have been lily white and all that good stuff, never done anything wrong. Praise God if you was. I wasn't that way. And when I got saved, there were some things that I had to quit automatically. I mean, there's some things that I just, I just had to quit. And there were some things that the Lord took from me. Well, one of those things was cussing. I cuss like a dang sailor. The, the people I hung around with, even the sinners, called me gutter mouth. I cussed so bad. It didn't matter how bad the word was. I'd throw it out. It didn't really matter. But when I got saved, the Lord took that from me. The drinking. I had to quit the drinking. I had to quit the smoking pot. I had to quit that. That was stuff that I knew, hey, you got to quit. Now, I know some people say, well, God made the herb and all this. stuff. That's baloney. You can, you can smoke that pipe if you want. It's sin. It's wrong. You shouldn't be doing it. But that's a whole other story. But listen to me. Even after you get saved, you still may commit some of the sins that you did before you got saved. Y'all hear? Y'all listen to me? That's, that desire is still there to make you sin. That thing that you used to do is still inside of you wanting to do it. And just because you got saved, your sinful desires didn't leave. Matter of fact, some of them intensified because the devil just stowed it in that much harder because you're serving the Lord now. Okay? So, so remember I told you, don't beat yourself up when you have bad thoughts or, or you have a bad desire. That is just human nature. Okay? I know a lot of people may preach that if you have a bad thought or you do this or you do that, then that is sin. The thought ain't the sin. It's the acting upon the thought that's the sin. Okay? Because if, if we sinned every time we had a bad thought, then yes, we would sin every day. But I don't believe that we should sin every day. I don't believe we have to sin every day. And I don't believe a mature Christian should sin every day. Well, y'all help me out a little bit. All right? See... The, 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 the battle that's going on is real. It's just as real as we as physically fighting. That spiritual fight is just as real. And have you ever been to the place to where you knew you wasn't supposed to do something? Now, I'm gonna, don't, don't raise your hand. I'm just I'm, I'm meddling now. Have you ever been to the place where you knew you wasn't supposed to do something? I mean, you knew you wasn't supposed to do it, but you did it anyway? I have. That, my friend, is sin. And you know what happens when your spirit feel, when you have the spirit of God living inside of you, when you do that sin, the Holy Spirit's convicting you. 
And, and let me tell you something else. I thought about this tonight. The Holy Spirit loves us enough to convict us. He don't just sit back and say, well, I'm going to watch him crash and burn. No, the Holy Spirit convicts us. And I want you to know something. When you sin, you have to jump all over top of the Holy Ghost. Because he's convicting you. You got to play mental games. Oh, then you get into justification. Any of y'all ever justified your sin? Am I preaching to the choir tonight? Amen. We justify when there's something that we really want to do. Man, our mind will start automatically. Our flesh and our mind will start automatically trying to think of ways we can justify what we want to do. Uh, even though it's a sin, we try to justify it and we try to come this way and that way and jump over this and jump over that. And the Holy Ghost is screaming saying, no, don't, don't do this. And we're like, Phew. we do it anyway. Anybody ever done that? That's sin, my friend. It's fleshly living, and it will cost you. So that battle that's inside of us is so real that we've got to be so careful because if we're not, we'll continue to do that. And, and, and I'm looking at you Christians in here. Hopefully everybody in here is a Christian, a strong Christian. I want you to listen to me. Just because you got saved don't mean you ain't going to be tempted. And if you get tempted, you got the, you got the choice to not do it. It's not a sin to, for the desire. It's not a sin to be tempted. It's a sin when you act upon it. Everybody got that. I want us to be straight and clear about that up front. Amen? So, we, we can't justify sin. You may justify it to yourself. I may justify it to myself. But you can't justify it to God because there's no way to justify sin. And I want you to understand this too. Sin is sin with God. All right? So, in, in Galatians chapter 19 through, through 20, 21, Paul talks about three classifications of sin. And I'm probably just going to get through one of them. But I want us to look at this. This is the results of fleshly living. He's talking to the church. I want you to understand that. He's not talking to the sinner. He's talking to the church here, okay? This letter is written to the church. And so all this stuff that he's talking about, he's talking about to the church. You know why? Because it was happening in the church. People were falling away. People were falling away from the first love. That's what we've been talking about. They were falling into sin, and they were living in sin, and he's trying to get their attention. He's trying to show them the difference between living in the flesh and living in the spirit. All right? Hallelujah. I hope y'all ready for this. Sexual sins is what he deals with. The first thing is sexual sins. And I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but I promise you every single one of us in here has committed a sexual sin. Y'all look so religious in here. Y'all, I'm sorry. I didn't wear my glasses, my spiritual glasses, where I can see the halos over everybody's head in here tonight. But I promise you every one of us committed sexual sin. You know that you don't have to have actual sex to commit a sexual sin? Okay, I told y'all we're getting ready to get deep, so, you, you know, everybody's in here, you, you got fair warning. Here we go. All right? Immorality. The Greek word, the immorality, if you look at the English word of that word, is pornography. Pornography is rampant. Pornography, I forget the zillions of dollars that's spent by people on pornography. It's said that 75 percent of men are hooked on pornography and so we look at pornography as, as looking at nasty pictures or watching dirty videos or going down to this crazy place they've got down here on 321 it needs to be shut down it looks more full in the church you say why are you looking I look make sure I don't see your car there because I'm going to drag you out by the hair of your head <laughs> don't think I wouldn't I ever see a new vision tag down there, somebody's getting their butt whooped. I will be in the flesh in a second. Lay hands on no man suddenly, I will that night. But I want you to look at the list of things that Paul talks about. Because like I said, sin is sin to God. But we don't look at it that way. Oh boy. Adultery. Adultery is one of the sins that Paul lists. Adultery is when someone is married and they have sex with someone else. They don't, the other person don't have to be married. But if they're married in a, in a married relationship, married, 
separated until you get your divorce papers, you are still married. Did you hear me? I'm not talking to you, Glenn. I'm talking to the phone. <laughs> Glenn is videoing it because some people from church couldn't be here, so they're watching. But I want you to know that sex outside of your marriage partner is adultery. Amen? The next one he deals with uh, is fornication. Well, fornication is any sexual sin or any sex outside of marriage. Now, do I need to get explicit with you? Any sex. You may call yours. I've got a friend that calls himself a virgin. He said he was a virgin before he got married. But then he goes and tells me of all these other things they did before they got married. He had sex before he had marriage. He didn't have sex the way you normally have sex. You know, we had a president one time that said he didn't have sex. <laughs> he had sex. That's sex. Any sexual act that you do is sex. I told y'all, I'm, I'm just calling it out, masturbation is sex. It's sin. Why y'all y'all look at me like that? Yeah, good gracious alive. Like nobody never dealt with that? Deal with it, baby. It's sin. Any sex outside of marriage is sin. It's fornication. All right? So the devil wants your flesh to do those things. Some of y'all are real uncomfortable right now. I'm the one that should be uncomfortable, but I'm not. I'm free as a bird. Amen? Any sexual sin is fornication. Any sex outside of marriage. Any sex outside the bond of marriage. I've heard people say, but I love them. Well, love them and put a ring on it, baby. If you're sitting at home, I know there ain't nobody here like this. If you're sitting at home and you're significant partner, your boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, don't want to put a ring on it, then it's better to marry than to burn. Keep having sex outside of marriage and see what happens to you. Hallelujah. We're just getting started. <laughs> Incest. Incest is a part of pornography. Adultery is, is part of pornography. Fornication is a part of porno pornography. Incest is sex inside the family. Sex inside the family. It's incest. You know what? People smiling, but most of the time, that is something that's forced on people. It's called rape. It's sick. It's sick that a father could do something like that to his child, or a grandfather could do something like that to his child, or uncle could do something like that to his niece or nephew. It's sick, perverted pornography. I praise God that all these things I'm talking about can be forgiven. So if you've done that, don't let the devil heap condemnation over you. But you need to get forgiven and you don't never need to do nothing. None of these things. Like I said, we look at things differently. God looks at sin as sin. You look at a pedophile. You look at a pervert. And we look at them and we think, how in God's name? That's the same sin as adultery to God. Now, I don't fathom that. And I thought about it today. I said, God, how in the world? God don't see things the way we see things. He don't think about things the way we look, think about things. Sin is sin in God's eyes. Well, I don't really got your attention now, ain't I? Homosexuality. Homosexuality is sin. Homosexuality is sex with the same gender. Male with male, female with female. Uh, I just want to be honest, God did not make you that way. God did not create you that way. I know that people's loving hearts wants to say, oh, my Lord, they're so loving, they're so great. They are. They're awesome people. There's a lot of people that are walking and living in a homosexual lifestyle that are awesome people, but it's sin and it will send you to hell. You cannot be a practicing homosexual and go to heaven no more than you can be a practicing adultery, a practicing fornicator, none of that, and go to heaven. I will, we'll get to that in a few minutes. I've told you before, and I'm going to tell you again, that homosexuals 
have lust for the same sex just like a heterosexual does for the opposite sex. The lust part is no different. Now, I don't get it, and you don't get it, but it's the same. And just like me as a heterosexual has to fight the spirit of lust, I can't give in to that because if I do it sin, the same way a homosexual does, they've got to fight that spirit of lust. And pray that God would deliver them just like some of you need to be delivered. Hallelujah. Boy, I just made a couple of you mad, didn't I? Hey, the shoe fits, wear it, man. I mean, let's get real tonight. Amen? If you're feeling uncomfortable, maybe you need to check your closet. Amen? You shouldn't feel uncomfortable in here unless you've got sin in your life. If you've got sin in your life, praise God, get it rid of it. That's why God gave me this message tonight, so you can get free. You say, you preach this on a Wednesday night. We're the cream of the crop. Yeah, you are. That's why I need to get you whooped into shape. Amen? Look at your neighbor and say, he's not talking to me. Well. <laughs> the next one he deals with, and, and we're going to talk about this for a minute, is sensuality. Sensuality is just open, blatant sexual sin I mean people that don't care I, I'm telling you what if you watch any type of TV whatsoever people do not care they're open they're blatant about it they don't they don't care they just open about it now listen there's there's nothing wrong and and Tony deals with this in the book there's nothing wrong with you being in style or looking good Taking care of yourself. What is the old preacher used to say? The barn needs a little bit of paint sometimes. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Some of y'all get that later. Makeup. Barn needs a little makeup. Anyway. There's nothing wrong with looking good. But when you dress to attract, and, and, and you know, there was a testimony at our church in Tennessee one time. Uh, is one of one of our friends. She's a very very pretty lady, but she shared a testimony how she used to entice men. She would bend over on purpose just to get them to look at her and knowing. And y'all do know this, don't you? That men are enticed by the look and women by by touch, which I believe that's changed now. I believe women's just as dang enticed. Is it? Oh, you say you don't believe me? You can't even watch a commercial now without that stuff. I'm sitting at home a while back, and I'm watching, you know, Carl's and Hardy's, whatever, come together. And the first commercial they did had this woman come on there eating this big old hamburger, had a mouth about this big. And, you know, it's just sensual. And, and about it, listen, no, y'all listen to me. I'm being real. I'm told you I'm going to be real with you. Get mad if you want. And then about a week later, got this hot shot man on there eating that big old hamburger. You know why? Sex sells. Sex sale. Listen, ladies, they're trying to attract your husband. They're trying to get our attention. They're trying to lure us away. It's sins of the flesh. They're trying to get us to look at that stuff and think about that stuff. And this is what I want to tell you. Ladies, men, you better take care of your spouses at home. Sexually, you better take care of your spouses at home. They can laugh, whatever. You want me to tell you why I'm saying that? Because if you don't take care of them, somebody else will. Y'all look at me. I don't care if you get mad, whatever. I ain't trying to be rated R. I'm trying to tell you the truth. I'm trying to keep you from being in my office in a couple months. It's the truth. That's why the Bible has, you know, there's scripture in there for that, that a woman's not supposed to hold her, withhold herself from a man unless they're fasting. And I don't see y'all fasting a lot. Now, if you want to go on a fast, then you go right ahead. But see, listen to me. I'm trying to be real. If Glenn ain't mad at me, she knows we've talked about this. It's just the, the truth, man. When you don't satisfy your partner, male or female, when you don't satisfy them sexually, then guess what? 
The devil's going to throw that stuff. He's going to throw that stuff and throw that stuff right in front of you. It's the truth. Why are y'all... Why y'all look at me like that? It's the truth. And if you're not doing it, I, I'm seeing people poking right now. I just, I, just, I just heard somebody in the spirit realm say, I got to learn that scripture. I know John 3, 16, but I need that scripture too. Y'all crazy. Am I lying? You, you, you can't hardly walk into Walmart anymore. People half naked. And some of them really need clothes on. Amen. Amen. I mean, really need clothes on. Some of them, I believe, they're trying to wear their fourth grade uniform. <laughs> I ain't doing it. <laughs> Listen, you know, I'm, I'm just, sex is beautiful when it's between a man and, a, and, a, and, a, and his wife. It, God created it that way. But we've perverted it. We pervert, we've made it into a toy or a game, or just pleasure, when it's supposed to be a beautiful thing that God created. We shouldn't be embarrassed about that. It's awesome. God made it that way. Greatest feeling in the world. Amen? Satisfy each other. Take care of your business. For real, I'm, I'm being as honest as I can be. What did Jesus say? What did the Bible say to Adam? He said, multiply. I'm, I'm, I'm being serious, man. Take care of your stuff. Love each other. Meet each other's needs. So the devil don't come in and try to blast you. Y'all, y'all good. Our culture, our culture is, that's it. Sex sales, that's our culture today. It's all you see. It's all you're going to see. Sex sells. And it's sin. When we live in the flesh, when we look at that stuff, the desires of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the, the eyes, and the pride of life. That's what the devil's doing today. Amen? Well, the images, the words, the suggestion, appeal, it appeals to our eyes. It appeals to our sensuality. If we're not careful, we'll fall into it. Amen. I don't want you to do that. Amen. So just because you have a weakness doesn't mean it's a sin to you. I want you to hear me loud and clear. Because I preach against sin as much as anybody. I believe that we should preach against sin. But I'm telling you, just because you have a weakness doesn't mean that's a sin. It's when you act upon that weakness is when you sin. Okay? Just because you, you have lustful thoughts, just because you have lustful desires or you have these things or whatever, that doesn't make it a sin until you act upon it. You don't want to do that. I've got a question, a couple questions here. If you know that you have a problem in a certain area, what are you doing about it? And how are you guarding yourself from putting yourself in the wrong situation. That's, that's 50 to you. Because I know you got it. <laughs> Serious. If you know you have a problem. What are you doing about it? And how are you guarding yourself. From putting yourself in a bad situation. You remember we was talking about justification a little while ago. So that's what we do. We justify it, and then we get caught up in it, and then we, me we messed up. And then we're like, oh, God, how in the world did that happen? I, I hear people talk about how stuff pops up on their computer. I praise God that stuff don't happen to me. But the reason it happens to some of you is because you've 
popped up on some of the sites you ain't supposed to be on. And now it filters it over and throws it up on there. Now, I ain't saying everybody, but that's what happens. Amen? Did you know that Facebook is set up like that? Whatever they think you're interested in, they'll throw it up there. I mean, Glenn talked about that a while back. It was stuff, you know, if you're interested in cooking, boy, they'll throw cooking stuff up. Or if I like one of your comments, then it's going to throw all your stuff up. That's the way Facebook is. It's to entice you. It's to, it's to appeal to what you like. Some of you looking at me, man, you are so mad right now. Don't be mad at me. And listen, don't let the devil heap condemnation over you. If you hadn't done what you're supposed to do, then start doing what you're supposed to do. If you got sin in your life, if you got stuff going on, then, then fix it. Don't get mad at the messenger. I didn't write this. Last time I checked, Paul wrote it. He wrote 13 books. Okay? Okay? See, you may not be able to control the temptation or the desire or, or control that it happens, but you can control how you do it, whether or not you do it. The choice is yours. I talked about choices. I did a little video Tuesday, yesterday. I just felt really led to do that because that's what I was thinking about. How, you know, people may treat us bad and all this stuff, you know. I was in a good mood, man. I was fired up and, and I make that thing. I talk about loving people and being loved and encouraging people and all that stuff. And then I get out of the prison and bam, right between the eyes. Bad. Well, I don't know if it's bad news. I don't know. It just wasn't what I wanted to hear. At the time, anyway. And I had to sit back and pray. And I said, how am I going to handle this? Am I going to lash out at this person and be a goofball? Or am I going to handle it the way Jesus would handle it? And praise God that I had it. I'm learning. I'm learning. I used to have a, I'd have lip bashed them. But I didn't, man. I just prayed about it. And it's working out. Amen? It's what we've got to do sometimes. See, that's what the Holy Spirit is there for. I told you earlier, we got to jump over the Holy Spirit to sin. The Holy Spirit is there to show us what's wrong, to warn us what's wrong. And some of us, he's warning us and warning us and warning us, and we still keep going. We're hell-bent on doing what we want to do. And finally, he'll step back and he'll say, okay. You know, it's like a child going to something hot. We're going to scream at him and say, hey, don't do that. Don't do that. That's what the Holy Spirit does. We're going in the wrong direction. We're going to talk to somebody we shouldn't or do something we shouldn't do. The Holy Spirit saying, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. But then finally, you keep being so hard-headed. Then when it happens, you, you're like, whoa, I messed up. Hit your neighbor and say, don't mess up. That's, that's one of them. I got two more. That we'll get on later. I want you to hear me. This is real. This fight is real. And, and look at me. Husbands and wives. Don't go home and start. You heard what Pastor Scott said. You better. <laughs> don't go doing that. That ain't going to get you nowhere. Okay. That ain't going to get you nowhere. Because there's probably a hundred other things they can throw up in your face. Amen? That's just one thing we're talking about. But let's love each other. And let's fulfill the things that God's told us to fulfill and be who God's told us to be. Because if we don't, we're going to end up in trouble. We'll fall from our first love. And then when we fall from our first love, he's talking to Christians. All these other things is going to happen. And I want to I read this to you. We're going to go through them other ones, but I want to read this to you. How, how serious of a proclamation Paul makes because when he goes through all the he goes through all these things, and I got two more sections to go through, but this is the last thing he says. He says, I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's how important this is that we don't do those things, that we don't live in sin. Sure, you know, we're going to sin. There's going to be a time we're weak or the devil tricks us. We're going to sin. Don't live in that sin. Don't water in that sin. Repent and move on. Just because you have the desire, just because you're tempted, don't mean you got to fall for it, okay? Everybody good? Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord, we love you and we thank you for your word.
Your word is true. Your word is powerful. And Lord, as we uh, have proclaimed your word tonight, I pray that it would fall on a good soul. I pray that uh, spiritual ears would be open tonight because you're trying to warn the church uh, that we should be sanctified, set apart, different than the world. Um, Lord, what you didn't you didn't pray that we would come out of the world because we need to be in the world to be salt to the world, to be light to the world. But you prayed that we wouldn't be of the world and have the world mindset. And Lord, there's so many churches, so many Christians, so-called Christians that are changing their morals and their values. And you said in your word that they would call what is wrong right and what's right wrong. God, please help us not to get to that point. Yeah, we need to love everybody. We need to love everybody. But we don't need to accept their sin. We need to love them and try to help them through their sin. And Lord, at these times I failed at that miserably. And I ask you to forgive me for that. I've asked you many times. We miss opportunities, Lord, to love on people. And, and that's our mission statement and vision statement is to love people that nobody else loves, to reach people that nobody deems reachable, to equip the saints to do the work of the gospel and be found faithful when you come back. Help us to do those things, Lord. Help us to love. Help us to reach. Help us to equip. And help us to be found faithful. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah.